to the January 3rd, 2019 meeting of the Mifflin County Board of Commissioners. We'll begin this morning with an invocation by Commissioner Postal, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. Eternal God, when we are impatient with others and ourselves, teach us, your children, that we can't always get what we want. Teach us instead to trust you and to listen quietly for your will to reveal itself. We pray today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have the approval of the minutes from our December 20th, 2018 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Approval of the bills, Commissioner Postal. Okay, let's start with the accounts payable, which total $518,314.45. Payroll account totals $437,356.48. There are five EFTs in our 911 account for $2,739.83. One check in the CDBG account for $1,449.63. There's one check in the CDBG home account for $10,975. Liquid Fuels account has one check for $7,135.72. And finally, in the Liquid Fuels Act 89 account, there's one EFT totaling $102.54. Make a motion to pay the bills. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Bills are approved. Treasury report. <coughs> Treasury Civics. Our starting balance was $353,608.09. We had deposits of $330,242.19. We transferred uh, $500,000 from the capital reserve. We had a transfer from LEPC for $1,057.65. We had void checks for $1,056.02. We agree with the reading of the bills by Commissioner Postal leaving us a lending balance of $230,293.02. Our liquid fuels account has $304,008.30. Our liquid fuels Act 89 has $264,444.06. Our 911 account has $2,709,979.26. Our LEPC has $15,000. Uh, $715.22. Our local fuel use act has uh, $192,749.51. Capital reserve has $3,590,947.12. Our certificate of deposit has $3,089.22. And it's all subject to audit. All right, thank you. Any questions for Deb? Motion to approve. So I'll move. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Treasury reports approved. Meetings and events. Commissioner Duncan. Okay. Uh, with the holidays, uh, over the last two weeks, there has not been quite as much activity as normal. Um, yesterday, we attended the prison board meeting, and uh, we also had a salary board meeting. And that concludes my meeting report, but I do reserve the right to speak a little later on another topic. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we had a board of elections uh, meeting, we had a salary board meeting, we met with an architect to explore the reuse of certain county assets. We met with PennDOT on the uh, temporary easement for a PennDOT project that's later on in your agenda. I attended the Mifflin County Planning Commission meeting, JVBDS Executive Committee meeting. We had a prison board meeting as Commissioner Dunkel commented. And on uh, New Year's Day I attended the swearing in ceremony for our representatives, Irvin, uh, Benninghoff, and Hershey, and Senator Corman in Harrisburg. All right. Which was like the uh, first day of school. <laughs> All right, thank you. I had the Board of Elections Salary Board. We met with Gary Brown of PennDOT and also the Prison Board. Public comment today. 
Mr. Swanger. Good morning. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize for not submitting this early enough for the agenda, but it uh, did just come available and I think it's pertinent information that the public should be aware of. Uh, with the 2019 election season now upon us, uh, I wanted to uh, make the public aware that the Penn State Extension Office uh, will be having a Toss Your Hat in the Ring uh, seminar that's going to be for individuals that ever thought about running for local office uh, to attend. It's going to be an informational session where they're going to have a guest speaker coming in and also at the end of the night going to have a group of panelists. I as well will uh, be one of the panelists there to answer uh, any questions and talk about the local election process. Uh, the date for this uh, in Lewistown is going to be January 28th and that's going to be down at the Penn State Extension Office on East Market Street. Uh, and again, it's going to be a lot of information. More information is available on the Extension's website, uh, which I will give to the press here. So while they're making their report, they could throw that in there. Uh, also on the election website, we have, uh, we as the Board of Elections have uh, posted the countywide offices that will be up for uh, election in 2019. Uh, just to briefly go over these, will be county auditors, county commissioners, county coroner, district attorney, and prothonotary and clerk of the courts. Also, Mifflin County School Board will have five school board representatives that will be up for election. I am working with the municipalities to get a list of uh, list of local offices, township supervisors, etc., uh, and we will be updating this list as they become available to us. Um, we ask that the municipalities report to us by February 19th, which begins the first day of circulation of petitions. Uh, the election office is always available if anybody has questions on uh, documentation required, eligibility for running for office, uh, feel free to call the office or stop by first floor of the courthouse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. One last thing, Zane. Happy birthday. Thank you. I have a question. On that tossing your hat registration fee, it didn't say anything in the flyer. Right. The Penn State Extension Office does have a registration fee which covers cost for marketing efforts uh, having people come in to speak as uh, guest speakers and and whatnot but that's all through the Penn State extension I believe it's $25 so is that correct uh, yes okay any more questions for Zane all right what's your book on the other topic you want to reach here do you want me to go now yeah okay very good Last year, the Mifflin County Library asked the county commissioners to adopt a proclamation to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the library. It was our honor to recognize this important milestone in the library's history. During my remarks, I lauded the work of the library for its work and its service. However, I was also critical of the library for the methods employed by the library when the branch libraries in Milroy, McVeigh Town, and Allensville were closed. Today, and at each commissioner meeting within the near future, I intend to focus upon the tactics the library used when closing the branch libraries, and again reiterate my call for Molly Kinney and members of the present or former Library Board of Directors to publicly acknowledge their failure to meet the standard expected for governmental and quasi-governmental organizations. Let me state from the beginning that I stand by the information I am presenting and I am very willing to debate Molly Kinney or any other board members current or past about the library's failure to be transparent and open uh, in the closure process. I will be using a flip chart to help illustrate my concerns. When Molly Kinney and the Mifflin County Library Board of Directors made the decision to close the libraries, they went to the individual branch sites and taped a note on the front door indicating that 
the library was closed until further notice. Now I'm going to use this flip chart here and I'm going to ask that the cameras uh, flip, um, hone in on this because some of us are visual learners rather than audio. This is, in essence, what the Mifflin County Library did. They posted a note, they, they taped a notice onto the doors of the branch library saying, this library is closed until further notice. One might expect to see this type of notice on the door of a massage parlor or tattoo parlor uh, that has closed. One might expect to see this on the door of a small business that has closed. But for a library that gets nearly one quarter of a million dollars every year from county government, it's rather unacceptable. In my opinion, it was a rather crass and underhanded way to make the closures. The library chose to ignore all local officials, all municipal officials, elected officials from the municipalities that they closed the libraries in. And it was these very officials that partnered with the library for decades. Is this the way you treat a friend? Is this the way you treat a partner? The library board knew, and Molly Kinney knew, when they posted the signs on the doors that they were deceptive. The sign, as it read, implied that this could be a temporary closing, perhaps due to some plumbing issue, uh, remodeling, painting, or whatever. In fact, they knew when they posted this that those libraries would never be open again as a branch library in the Mifflin County library system. Now, let's take a look at the second chart I have. Which libraries are we talking about? We're talking about the Milroy branch. 53 years, Milroy was a branch library in this county. 53 years, McVeigh Town, 51 years, Allensville, 34 years. If you add these up, you get a total of 138 years that these branches partnered with the library to provide educational, recreational, and other needs in the local communities. And the municipalities in doing that for 138 years were long-term partners of the library. Last year, as I indicated earlier, the county library system asked us to have a resolution in honor of 175 years of the Mifflin County Library. Excellent, we did it. Here, you have municipalities giving the county library system 138 years collectively. And they didn't even have the courtesy to notify the local elected officials, the people that you and I and everybody elect, that they were going to close them. Now, how? How did these municipalities partner with the Mifflin County Library? Number one, they provided housing at no cost. In other words, each of those municipalities provided a site and never charged the library one single penny for rent. Number two, the municipalities paid the utilities. They paid the electric, the heating, the water, the sewage. And further, the municipalities provided custodial services. 
the cleaning, the maintenance, snow removal. Again, 138 years. Now think about this. These municipalities freely gave the space and paid the bills associated with those branch libraries as it relates to the utilities and custodial services. Think of the investment those municipalities made on behalf of the library. If you add up 138 years, it would run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars of in-kind services that these municipalities provided the library, and yet the library didn't even have the courtesy to notify those officials that they were going to close their branches. That to me is incomprehensible and just plain wrong. There is in life a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. This clearly was not the right way to do it. Who supported the branch libraries? The local officials. The mayor and the council in McVeigh Town, township supervisors of Oliver, Menno, and Armagh townships. And local officials are elected. Library board members are appointed. Library board members answer to nobody but themselves. Elected officials, on the other hand, must be cognizant of public opinion and the sentiment within their communities. So when the library board and Molly Kinney decided that they were going to close the libraries, they should have done it properly. You know, sometimes in life, decisions are very difficult. And we don't relish having to make decisions in difficult situations. But there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Now, when you speak to Molly Kinney about this situation, her response is simple. I didn't have a vote. I can't vote. I'm not on the library board. I may be the director, but I didn't have a vote. Yes, that's correct. She didn't have a vote. But she, of all people, a woman who has a PhD, should have been the moral compass, the moral compass for that board. If the board wanted to close the branch libraries, that was their prerogative. They had that right, and they did it. But they did it the wrong way. And that, to me, is unacceptable. And so, having said that, I have a couple questions for my colleagues. Kevin, as chairman of the board and as county commissioner for seven years now, is this the way that you would do business if we have a situation here in the county? Would, would you just simply go to that particular entity and post a notice on the door, or would you do something different? Then I would take a different path. And why would you take a different path? Just for the uh, disclosure, awareness. You know, I think the library board, I think the current library board in the past would know that they, they should have done things in a different manner. I know what they were faced with financially. They had an endowment fund that had been drained and financially to support five libraries, they didn't feel they could do it. But however, the, the method they used in getting there, you know, was, was not fair to everyone involved. They should have had a, meet, a couple meetings, maybe in the municipalities themselves in the evenings. But the, the path they choose wasn't the right one, but I think the decision they, they, they made, they were, they were forced to make in this circumstance. A brief comment and reaction to that. There are two different issues here. There's the issue of closing the branches, and then there's the issue of the process used to close the branches. I'm not discussing the former. I'm discussing the latter. The way the Mifflin County Library Board of Directors, which receives a quarter of a million dollars from this county each and every year, 
why they chose to take the low winding path that was not transparent, that was not fair, and particularly slammed the door in the face of the local municipal officials. A right way, a wrong way. Rob, you're going to be running for re-election this year, I assume, and you'll probably be doing some door-to-door -door and going to events throughout the county, and we'll probably be in the McVeigh Town area, the Allensville area. When you knock on the door and somebody said, you know, what the county did, what the county library system did, was within their prerogative. But the way, the way in which they did it was wrong. And all that Steve Dunkel has been asking for over the last couple years is a public acknowledgement by the library that, yeah, we screwed up. We did do things wrong. We should have been more transparent. We should have notified the elected officials. So if somebody mentions this to you as you're going door to door or in a public forum, what's your response going to be? My response, Commissioner, is that you're correct. I don't disagree. So why is it that the Mifflin County Library Board and Molly Kinney are so hesitant to offer an apology and acknowledgement to the people affected by this decision? You're asking me why they're making that decision? I don't know. Well, you, I thought you said you spoke to them and they told you they would not do it. They said they wouldn't do it. Why they're not doing it? I don't know. I can't get in their heads, Commissioner. I agree with you. I don't disagree. You, you didn't follow up, though, as to what, what their objections were in making an apology? Yeah, objections were it was a different board. Well, you know, the library is an institution, and the business of the library transcends boards. Boards come and go. Commissioners come and go. And the reality is that any, any quasi-governmental entity like the library has a responsibility, especially since it receives all the tax dollars that it does, <coughs> to be transparent, be fair, and do things above board. And so I am here today to begin to reiterate this process. Each and every meeting over the next several months or until the Mifflin County Library Board of Directors and Molly Kenny make the decision to do what they need to do, I will continue to highlight and examine other components of the way they did the job. And this is just step one. Thank you. Commissioner, I think I'm going to invite the library officials to a meeting and see if they want to address the points rather than guessing. We'll ask them to provide some answers. Well, I'd be very happy to participate in that, and I'd be very happy to debate them because how do you defend this? How do you defend this? The only logic that I can come up with is that they knew that the local communities would be opposed to the closure of the branches. <coughs> And so they operated on this route to try to keep from getting a black eye. The problem is the, prob the issue hasn't gone away. It's still there. <coughs> it was an injustice then, and it's an injustice today. So I'll be happy to meet with them, but I can assure you that I will use the forum I have as a county commissioner each and every meeting for the next several months to look at the various components that prove that the library board was not transparent and forthright in the way they closed the branch libraries. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to new business now. We have item A, request for exoneration of 2018 county portion for capita taxes. The Hamlin Borough Tax Collector Melody Kane has won. Do I have a motion to approve this exoneration? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Item B, amending the action taken on December 6, 2018 to exonerate Brown Township Tax Collector Cheryl Hartzler 
for collecting the 2018 per capita tax bill as presented. At the time we approved 98 exonerations, the corrected total is now 96. So motion to amend that action. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is approved. Item C, resolution number one of 2019 on behalf of Brown Township Supervisors approving budget revisions to the fiscal years 2015-2016 CDBG programs. Jim. Good morning and happy new year. Uh, this is a correction to a previously adopted resolution, which was resolution 17 of 2018, adopted on December 5th, 2018. Um, the wrong resolution just got uh, back to Kathy, so we corrected the resolution, which have the correct figures. This is an amendment to the 2015 and 2016 uh, Brown Township, Mifflin County on behalf of Brown Township uh, budget years. So the only difference is <clears throat> if you go down to the last whereas, number two, the decrease of the Bender Park Handicap Fishing Pier is in the amount of $917.85 versus what was previously adopted, which was $1,402.85. So the figure uh, that's accurate is the $917.85, which subsequently uh, impacts the Single Family Housing Rehabilitation Program, and the budget for that will then be $53,297.85. All remaining items uh, are intact and remain the same. Okay, thank you, Jim. Question? Motion to approve resolution number one. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is approved. Item D, change order number one for the street reconstruction of South Wayne and Spring Street project due to a decrease in cost of $18,311.37. Mr. Marks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Uh, this is a project that was completed uh, previously. It was uh, bid this summer and under contract um, with J. Falkert and Sons. Um, it is, it was for repaving on South Wayne Street, a, a portion of South Wayne Street and Spring Street within the borough of Lewistown using the borough's CDBG monies. Um, the original contract amount was $163,361.64 and the change order amount is $145,050.27, a decrease of $18,311.37. Um, a major portion of that um, change, uh, we always have a change order at the end of the job because we bid, when we do a paving job, we bid it per ton and per lineal foot of, of milling and that type of thing. Um, and then we do a change order at the end to address the, adjust the quantities based on what was actually used. Um, so we're not paying for more, paying for less than we, than we actually used. But a major portion of that was um, the Borough Street Superintendent had requested that we not pave a, a cross street on, at, on South Wayne Street due to potential water problems. Uh, and whenever they pave the cross street, then they will pave this portion. So, so basically, there was an intersection that was not completed, and that's that's a major portion for the reduction of, of the funding. So, uh, this this fund these funds will be moved to another project at some point in the future through a through a budget revision. And so, any questions? I'm, I'm sorry, Doug, maybe you said it, but what's the, what's the year, what year is, are these funds? Um, for South Wayne Street, it is 15 and 16, and for um, Spring Street, it is 2016 and 2017. So what this will expand is all of our 15 funds, all of our 16 funds, and a portion of the 17 funds for Lewistown Borough's portion of their CDBJ contract. The, uh, the re revision would take place in the 2017 year then, so therefore spending the, the previous year's funding. So. All right, motion to approve change order. So I'll move. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved, thank you, Doug. Yeah, thank you, Doug. 
Item E, on behalf of the Redevelopment Authority, Mr. County, a temporary easement is penned out for construction purposes on State Route 1005, <coughs> parcel number 222. Mr. Post, over you want to comment on that? Thank you. Uh, we had a meeting with the PennDOT representatives regarding this project, and PennDOT is updating and changing its traffic signals uh, in Lewistown. Last month, we took action on the signal that is at the courthouse that would be 3rd Street and Wayne. This one pertains to uh, the signal on Dorcas and uh, Market, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's, it's addressed to the Redevelopment Authority because in the research of the deeds, PennDOT had found that the Redevelopment Authority is still listed as the owner of a very small portion. This is probably about 200 square feet, which is like 10 by 20. Uh, and it's a temporary easement. They just needed to put some equipment on it while the um, signal is being uh, replaced. Uh, the offer is $500, which is uh, fair and um, was what the county had been offered for other projects on 3rd and uh, Wayne. So uh, the letter is in front of us to approve on behalf of the Redevelopment Authority since the Redevelopment Authority has no members. I make a motion to uh, approve the temporary easement with PennDOT for the construction purposes. Good. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Which is approved. Item F. Subrecipient agreement between the Metro County Commissioners and the Board of Juliet Terrace for road construction costs and portions of Hudson Avenue, Viaduct Way, and Wagner Avenue project using 2016-2017 CD funds. Yes, F and G uh, are two subrecipient agreements, which are the contractual obligations we, the county, the grantee of these funds have with the subrecipients. In, in the F item, the subrecipient is the borough of Junietta Terrace, which includes um, roadway reconstruction of Hudson and Viaduct Way in Wagner Avenue. Uh, Hudson and Viaduct Way. There's approximately 6,951 square feet of road surface on Hudson Avenue and approximately 5,129 square feet of road surface on Viaduct Way. Uh, it does not include any type of uh, milling as far as I understand. Is that correct, Doug? Uh, just paving notches, which would be at the end of the roadways or street crossings of the you know, milling that would take place, not actual complete total milling of the street. The borough has uh, uh, donated um, liquid fuels funds in the amount of $3,487 towards this project. The CDBG funds uh, are a total of $15,088, which a total project cost of $18,575. The second roadway is Wagner Avenue within the borough, and it includes the same road reconstruction work of approximately 21,897 square feet and uh, begins at Henderson Way along the westerly direction along Wagner Avenue to the termination of Wagner Avenue. Uh, those costs include um, 2017 funds, the prior roadway work I explained were 2016 funds. For the Wagner Avenue uh, project, CDBG funds in the amount of uh, $67,500 and $5,265. Uh, also, they, the Junietta Terrace Borough are uh, including liquid fuels for engineering design in the amount of 7000 for a total project cost of $79,765 for the, that road. So both projects total $98,340 and the agreement outlines what needs to be done on behalf of each party and the next step would be completion of the environmental review. Uh, which is currently underway. Uh, move on to G, it's the same, same sub-recipient agreement for, but for a different project in Armagh Township and that project involves the uh, installation of six um, ADA ramps with truncated domes along around the municipal building there at 283 Broad Street in Milroy 
It includes widening the existing sidewalks and um, it's a handicap uh, accessibility project for that municipal building. The uh, engineering will be paid from the township supervisors in the amount of $5,000 and the CDBG portion out of 17 money is 28000 with the total budget cost of 33000 I did send both agreements to uh, Solicitor Snook and I assume everything is okay and uh, that's why they're on the agenda. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Jim, I understand the Armagh Township uh, because it's ADA. But uh, the Juniata Terrace road reconstruction, is that because the neighborhood is eligible? Or? The, whole, the whole borough is eligible borough. because it's above 51% low moderate income. All right. So by you. default. All right, any questions for Jim? If not, I'll entertain a, a motion that approves both subrecipient agreements outlined as we have them. So moved. Sorry. All right, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion is approved. Thank you, Jim. Uh, item H, purchase of service agreements for use if needed by children and youth. Southern Early Learning, Lewistown, uh, Adelphoy Village, Latrobe, Community Specialist Corporation, Pittsburgh, Douglas Wide Treatment Alternative Centers, Lewisburg, Families United Network, Muncie. Yeah. So they are all renewals. Ex except for Community Specialist Corporation, which is a child adolescent mental health clinic. Um, Summit Early Learning is in our needs base. It simply is a name change. They were formerly SUMD. Um, they provide our Head Start in Early Education in Mifflin County. Um, Adelphi Village uh, provides foster services, um, and they also license a lot of our foster homes. Um, Diversified Treatment Alternative Centers, um, look, located in Lewisburg, they provide um, RTF services for us for at-risk at risk adolescent males, um, particularly focusing on physical and sexual abuse. And Family, Family United's network, known as FUN, also provides our foster care services. And back on Summit Early Learning, you said that's a name change? It is a name change. What was the name for? SUMD. S-U-M-D. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, in looking at these, um, some of them are at uh, some distance. For example, Pittsburgh, uh, Muncie, Latrobe. Um, what percent, and I'm, I'm just looking for a ballpark estimate here, what percent of special needs that youth have can be addressed locally versus those that have to be sent to facilities sure. that are at a greater distance. So most of the Latrobe as well as Muncie, they're their headquarters, but they actually have a site in Mifflin County. Um, so both Adelphi Village and Muncie have offices here. Um, the diversified treatment alternatives, most of the RTFs, which are, are facilities where our children or adolescents stay and, and have 24-hour care, we don't have a lot of resources in Mifflin County, so those are usually the ones that we outsource to. Um, for example, the Pittsburgh site, the Community Specialist Corporation, we have a young man that's in, um, in a residential treatment center in Cannonsburg, and he receives his mental health treatment through this um, mental health clinic near his RTF. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Motion to approve the purchase service agreements for you. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Item I, personnel. We have resignation of children and youth caseworker Catherine Ray, effective December 21st, 2018. The hiring of Pamela Britton, the part-time corrections officer, effective January 7th, 2019. Promotion of Cassandra Price from caseworker one to caseworker two, effective January 7th, 2019. The appointment of Grace Ward for an intern in the children and youth department, effective January 7th, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve these personal items? Second. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Can I Please ask, uh, Ms. Dan, how long will the intern be with us? Until um, April 28th. All right. All right. I'd like to thank Max Ober and Stephen Gibson from MCTV for being here today and making it available for our county residents to view. That concludes our agenda. We stand adjourned.